Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. In this presentation, I am going to show you about the basic architecture of the NCOG framework. The NCOG framework is a Java and Microsoft.NET framework that allows you to create neural network and artificial intelligence applications. In this presentation, I will show you how the major, most important objects in the NCOG framework work together. We will begin by looking at the basic network class. This class is what you will use to construct your neural network. The basic network class, as you can see here, has several major components. There are tags, properties, layers, a logic structure, and also a object that lets you access the structure of the neural network. The basic network class allows each of these to be used to construct the neural networks. We will look at each of these in turn. The tags and properties allow you to represent a lot of different neural network types using just this basic network class. The tags allow you to tag layers that are in the neural network. The layers, which actually make up a neural network, we'll see them in a moment, have to be tagged so that you know what they are. Are they input layers? Are they output layers? Or in the cases of some of the more complex neural network types, there's also context layers, A1 and A2 layers, and you need to have all of these tags so that NCOG knows how to actually process them. By allowing you to tag the network layers, you're able to construct a neural network type that was perhaps not even originally implemented with NCOG. We will also look at the layers. As you can see here, there are three basic layer types with NCOG. There's the basic layer. The basic layer is very much the workhorse of NCOG. You will create many basic layers. It's just a layer with a number of neurons and thresholds. There's also the context layer. The context layer is often used to create something like an Elman or a Jordan neural network. The context layer has a short-term memory that allows it to remember the signals that were passed to it between iterations of the neural network. There's also the radial basis function layer, which is used to implement a radial basis function neural network, or an RBF neural network. Layers are the main structure of the neural network. However, layers are connected together through synapses. You can see the synapses types shown here. The basic synapse is really just a low-level abstract class that is used for the other synapses types to build upon. The direct synapse is a synapse that just passes the input directly onto the next layer. This is used usually with a radial basis function network. The one-to-one -one synapse contains a connection from every neuron in the source layer to every neuron in the target layer. One connection per neuron, so the information is simply passed to the next layer. This is used for a contextual neural network where you want to use the context layer and it allows the network to simply remember the output from the source layer and store it in the target layer. The next two types, the weighted synapse and weightless synapse, are used to fully connect two layers. Every neuron in the source layer is connected to every other neuron in the target layer. The weighted synapse has a weight matrix. This is how the neural network learns. This is the longer term memory that is modified as the neural network is trained. The weightless synapse has no weights. The values are simply passed onto every other neuron from the source to the target without any sort of training possibility. So far we've looked at the layers and the synapses. These determine how the network is structured. You have layers and you have synapses connecting the layers together. However, this really does not tell NCOG what to actually do with these layers and synapses. This is done by the neural logic structure that is passed to the basic network. This tells NCOG really how to actually process the signals as they move from layer to layer. There are a number of different neural network logic structures and they are used to implement different types of neural networks like you see here. There's the ART1 logic which is used to work with adaptive resonance theory. There's the BAM logic, which is a bi-directional associative memory. That's another sort of neural network. Boltzmann logic is used to implement a Boltzmann machine. 
feed-forward logic is used to implement a multi-layer perceptron where the signal simply flows forward. The hop field logic is used to implement a hop field neural network, which is a fully recurrent single layer network. The simple recurrent logic is used to implement an element or a Jordan neural network. It's really the same as, it can be used in place of the feed forward neural network. It's just the feed forward logic is more efficient because it doesn't have to worry about backwards connections. And finally, the SOM logic is used to implement a self-organizing map. These logic types allow NCOG to support a number of different neural network architectures, all from the basic network class. This allows the basic network class to be very flexible, and we don't need to create a lot of base neural network type classes. We can simply persist this one to disk, and it encapsulates pretty much all of the network architectures that we would need to support in NCOG. As NCOG gets additional neural network types added to it, we will very likely add additional neural network logic classes to be added to it. The final part of the basic neural network is the structure. The structure is an object. It's not really persisted to disk. It's built from the layers and synapses. It's really just a convenience. It's for our performance. It basically analyzes all of the layers and synapses and allows you to perform operations on them very quickly that would take time otherwise. Now let's look at an example of a couple of neural networks architected in NCOG so you can see how they would be constructed. We'll start with the Hopfield neural network. Here you see the Hopfield neural network represented in the NCOG workbench. The hop field neural network is a very simple, in this case we have four neurons, but you could have more than this. It's a self-connected neural network. You have one layer here, and this one layer is connected to itself. Therefore, this layer is both the input and the output layer. Now we'll look at a slightly more complicated neural network. This is a feed-forward or perceptron neural network. Here you can see there's three layers. NCOG also supports additional neural network types that are more complicated than the perceptron. For example, the Elman neural network. You can see the Elman neural network here. The Elman neural network has a context layer, and this context layer is basically connected in through the hidden layer so that it is remembering the signals that were passed from the, as the neural network was processed, and this gives it a sort of a short-term memory. Now let's look at how these would be constructed actually in Java. The C-sharp code is very similar to the Java code. We're going to look at the Elman neural network that we just saw. You see the Elman neural network and the connection and the various layers that were created in the synapses. The NCOG workbench can generate the Java source code for this. It can also generate the C-sharp or the Visual Basic source code for this as well. Here you see the Java source code for the Elman neural network. All of the layers and synapses are represented here. You see everything. The layers are constructed and the synapses are hooked up between them to mimic the way that you saw the layers and synapses in the diagram that you produced using the NCOG workbench. This presentation gave you a quick overview of all of the basic object types that are used by NCOG to construct neural networks. You can see how you can construct a neural network according to the NCOG architecture. It gives you all of the building blocks that you need to create simple or more complex neural networks. If you would like more information on the NCOG project, you can find it at www.ncog.org. Thank you for watching the presentation.